Thank you everyone for coming. <clears throat> Super excited about our speaker today. I'm going <clears> to <throat> sorry, introduce him. As a former engineer, Wally is an MFT receiving his license in 2008. Prior to entering graduate school, he immersed himself into the Hikomi world in 1998. After seeing and experiencing the power of body-oriented therapy, he then became a workshop chunky, getting his hands and body into every workshop he could find. In his practice, he pulls from Hikomi, psychodrama, gestalt, somatic experiencing, integrative body psychotherapy, Arnie Mandel's process work, and his own trauma recovery. And also, he has this in the back, so if you didn't get one, it's back on the, on the back table. And I also want to give Wally an extra thank you. He stepped in fairly last minute to um, cover a slot that was open by different speakers, so we can give an extra round of applause. That we, we're very grateful for that. Thank you. Okay, as a reminder, to make sure to remember to turn your cell phones back on after the presentation's done. That'd be great. Um, as a body-oriented therapist, I'm starting to be much more in tune with my body and becoming more aware that um, there's a strong correlation between public speaking anxiety and kidney function. So I'll go as far as I can here, see what we can do. So today I'll, I'll be introducing the Hakami Method uh, presentation. And um, we'll be doing some experiential work. I understand that you all like experiential exercises, so we'll be just doing some of that. And uh, we'll have uh, questions, comments in the end. And we couldn't get the video to work, so if we have enough time, I may do a live demo, depending on timing. So if any of you put yourself in the hands of science, you know, let me know at the very end, and we can maybe uh, do that. In order for me to get here, I'm going to do a little meditation, and you're welcome to join me, if you wish. So in Hakomi, a lot of what we experience and what we practice is mindfulness. And in terms of being mindful, it's about allowing ourselves to go in and just be in experience with our internal world. So if you feel like joining me with this, go ahead and find your a way to be comfortable. And in Hokomi, we don't have a thing you need to cross your hands or put your hands on your lap or keep your feet on the floor. We trust the wisdom of the body. And in trusting the wisdom of the body, just let yourself notice what position feels right for you. What position feels most comfortable? Okay. All right. So just take a moment. Let yourself drop inside. Close your eyes if you wish. Or let your eyes gently fall on the floor or on the table. And just let yourself be aware of your internal landscape without judgment, with just an open curiosity. What's happening in there? Maybe you might take a moment to feel your feet on the floor, if they're on the floor, or if your legs are crossed. You might notice the expansion of your rib cage as you inhale and exhale. And just allow whatever arises to be here. Just let's give some spaciousness to whatever you're experiencing in your internal world. We're not trying to control or make anything happen here. We're just in an open space of awareness. Sometimes some meditations have you, oh, these are clouds in the sky, and they have you just ignore the clouds. And all that's great. And in Hakomi, we don't need to effort. Just allow ourselves to be in this place of open awareness. Notice the quality of your thoughts. If there's any there. You might notice how the chair is supporting you, or the couch, or the table supporting you. And let yourself notice the experience of that. And then gently allow yourself to come back and whenever it feels right. As you open your eyes, if your eyes are closed, as you open your eyes, let the world come to you. As you open your eyes, let the world come to you. It's very different than going out and looking at something. If you allow light to enter your eyes and to be as a receiver 
to be receptive to the world entering your eyes. Okay, thank you for joining me on that. I'm going to give you a little history about how I got involved in this business, being a, a former engineer. <laughs> I, uh, I was an engineer for many, many decades, and uh, I was in the computer room one day, and uh, I heard this voice on the radio, and this voice on the radio said, if love feels so good, what are we afraid of? I went, what? He says, if love feels so good, and we're just, everybody's looking for love, and yet we're afraid of it, what's going on with that? And I thought, well, darn, I'm an engineer. I should be able to figure that one out. <laughs> of course, I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> but it doesn't live in the conscious mind, right? There's a lot of things that live in the body that don't live in the conscious mind or the aware mind. And the gentleman gave his name. His name was Stan Dale. He's the founder of the Human Awareness Institute. How many of you know the Human Awareness Institute? Ever heard of it? Great. Thanks. Welcome. So uh, he said, uh, he gives these workshops on love and, and intimacy and connection. And I thought, okay, well, send me your flyer. So I got the flyer, and the flyer arrived at my office. And you know, I'm from Boston, right? <laughs> New York. So I'm reading this flyer. The walls around your heart will gently melt. <laughs> <laughs> California New Age stuff. I thought this was crazy. But there was something that drew me to it. I wasn't quite sure what it was. Something really attracted me to this work. So, and I went and I did some of the high workshops. And I realized, oh my God, I have a body. Something lives from here down. That was an awakening moment. That was a real shock. So I started doing all these body-oriented workshops, and I got my hands on all the workshops I could possibly do because there was something that was living in here I wasn't aware of. When I was hearing Standale's voice in the radio, I was, <laughs> I was listening to him, and he's talking about love and fear, and, and I went like this, and like, there's water coming out of my eyes. What's this? <laughs> oh, this is what people call tears, <laughs> right? So it was really like something's going on in here that I couldn't quite explain. And as an engineer, I have to figure everything out. So I started a long path and long journey of doing that. Along the way, I ran into this guy by the name of Ron Kurtz. He does this Hakomi work. And they had a little workshop in Marin. So um, I went down to this workshop in Marin. And there were like 15 of us in a circle. And Ron, who's the developer of Hakomi, is working very closely with somebody. And he's like right there. And he's like paying exquisite attention to that individual. And the person he was working with said something that touched something in me. And I went, <sighs> I sighed for a moment. And he turns to me and he said, what just happened here? Well, you're aware of something I'm not aware of. Uh, something's wrong here, right? I want to cultivate the awareness that you have. If you can be deeply with somebody and hear something happening behind you, I want to cultivate that. I want to know what that is. So I get fascinated with Ron and his work in the work of Hakomi. So I started taking all these Hakomi workshops. And, uh, and you have to take, they, they have a two-year comprehensive training and then a one-year training for, uh, for therapists, uh, a nine-month training. And I wanted to take the two-year training because I wasn't in, ther I wasn't in therapist, uh, therapist at that point. So uh, I wanted to take this training so bad. And I was going to these introductory trainings, these one-day trainings. And there was a guy there who I didn't like. He was a senior trainer for Hakomi. His name is John Eisman. And uh, I've already told him the story, so it's not like I, there's any secrets being spread here. So I really didn't like this guy. He was funnier, funnier than me. He was unflappable, way more unflappable than me. He was brilliant, way more brilliant than me. And he had everything all over me. And I went, I just don't like this guy. What I didn't really like is he was showing me how small I felt next to him. I had all these projections on him. Of course, I wasn't aware of any of that stuff. So I said, I can't let this stand in my way. I have to do this Hokomi work. I've really got to do this work. I can't let this get in my way. So during one of the trainings, I went up to him. And I said, John, can I talk to you for a moment? He goes, sure, what's up? And I looked him in the eye, and I said, I don't like you. <laughs> and he said, cool, tell me about that. I went, in shock, I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, okay, here's my data dump. You blah, 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 blah. And so I just laid like five minutes worth of my judgments on him. And at the end of that, he went, wow, is there more? <laughs> and 
Oh yeah, man, there's more. <laughs> so I just kept telling him all the judgment I had of him. Of course, I didn't know it was a judgment. And at the end of all that, he was just sitting there with loving eyes for me. And he said, thank you so much for telling me. And I collapsed in tears in his arms and fell up in love with him in that moment. And I'm still in love with the man. And uh, as I walked away from that, I turned as I was walking away, I went, wow, that is Hakomi. That is Hakomi. All right, so I got my pen and paper and I signed up for the training that day. So since then, and that was in, I did the training in 98 and 99, I took the two year training and my world changed. And so did everybody around me, all my family and friends, they all changed with me too in some ways. And as, you, as you're well aware, when you change, some, the, the system has to change. So after that, I started to, I went to grad school and went to JFK and I got a former classmate over here, Barbara. It's lovely seeing you again. And I went to JFK and got my master's in, in 2001, I think, something like that. And uh, since then, I've been a longtime student of Hakomi and uh, assist a lot of their trainings. I'm assisting at one of their trainings, the, one of the comprehensive trainings right now. And it, it's home base for me. And like most of us, we're pretty eclectic. We draw from all sorts of different sources and resources. But it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty much home base for me. Ron Kurtz, the founder, the way, one of the ways he actually started to uh, understand this work is he was uh, originally in bioenergetic analysis. And uh, you know the old days were like the, the armoring, if somebody's got armor and you have to break it down, break down the resistance, break down the armoring. And he was working with somebody out there and uh, one of the trainers said there was, a, there was a woman out there in the middle of the floor who was doing some work and she was hunched up like this. She was on all fours and her back was arched like a cat, you know, like a cat about to pounce, like Arr! And her whole body was rigid. And the trainer said, go over there and break it down. Go down and push on her back and break it down. We have to break down the armoring. And he went up to her and he looked at her and he goes, oh, I don't know, this doesn't feel right to me. And he had the impulse, the brilliant impulse, to take his hand and go under her belly and gently support the arch, gently support the resistance. And she collapsed like that and started sobbing. When you support resistance, right, the resistance is there because it's there for protection. The resistance is there because it was needed at some point in time. When you support resistance, it doesn't have to resist anymore. It doesn't have to fight back anymore. And then that way you can get a deeper cooperation of the unconscious material that's under that. Is that making some sense? Yeah. So that was part of what started wrong and like, Oh, there's a whole different way of being with, instead of breaking through resistance, there's a whole different way of being with people that's more supportive. Okay. The word Hakomi is a Hopi word meaning where I stand in relation to all these realms. Where I stand in relation to all these realms. The realms being the internal realms and the external realms. And so it's a very integrative model. So to give credit where credit's due, the developer was Ron Kurtz. He has uh, since passed, he passed maybe five, six years ago, I think, if I remember right. Um, also Dr. Richard Heckler, who was actually a Sonoma County resident, and he started the Hokomi Foundation or the Hokomi Institute in San Francisco many years ago. He has since retired from the institute, but the institute's still very alive and well. And then the teachers and trainers, the te uh, trainers, uh, John Eisman, Scott Eaton, Rob Fisher, Manuela mishka -Reeds, Julie Murphy, and Shai Levy. And a uh, special shout out to Shai Levy. He's the one that gave me a lot of material for this presentation, so big shout out to Shai for all of his help in this. Teachers are Shirley Bardevere, David Fish, Nicole Heinrich, Dominique Lando, Gal Seckley, and Susan Santara. And these are all, uh, Bay Area teachers and trainers. There's people down in Southern California and there's a whole different Hokomi organization in the Boulder area. But um, special, these are the uh, faculty for the Hokomi Institute here in San Francisco. I am curious, um, how many people are actually Hokomi practitioners out there? I'm gonna get my finger on the thing. Nobody, whoa, oh, okay. How about, um, I'm curious how many people have ever heard of Hokomi? Raise your hand. 
Okay, good hands, good number of hands. How many of you can spell it? <laughs> okay, without looking at the board, please, thank you. Okay, I'm curious about other somatic experiencing, or uh, somatic practitioners. How many are familiar with somatic experiencing? Let's see, hands. Oh, good number of you, great. Okay, uh, sensory motor, any sensory motor practitioners out there? Great. Uh, brain spotting, EMDR, a couple of you, okay. Um, MBSR, mind body stress reduction, okay, a couple of you. How about focusing, and one of the older ones? Okay, good, oh, wow, that's cool. A uh, Stan Tatkin's Pact, working with couples. How many of you know some Pact? Okay, good, one, fantastic. Um, integrative Body Psychotherapy, IBP, one. Okay, you guys are awesome, too. Okay. Body Mind Centering, how many of you know that one? Okay, one. Wow, <laughs> this is an intelligent crowd. How about the old fashioned core energetics? How many from the old, you know, beating pillows and, you know, primal screen, that kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, uh, right? Dance therapy, psychodrama, other action methods. Okay, good. Uh, are there any other somatic practices I haven't mentioned that, yes? CRM. CRM, I don't know that. What's that one? Oh, I don't know that one, thank you. Anything else? And yes? Yes, the tapping, yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, he was fabulous, wasn't he? Oh my God, I loved his work. Yes? Which one? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Gestalt, uh huh. Great. So, we're going to look at some of the principles of Hakomi, if I can get this thing to work. All right. There's very long definitions up here, and they're in your handout. You probably won't need your handout, but I'll give you the shortcut here so you don't have to read through this. I didn't know how to make a, a presentation that wasn't death by PowerPoint and still get the information across. <laughs> But I know some of you are more visual learners and some more auditory, so we've got the visual materials up here if you want. The idea of organicity. Organicity is basically, we believe that the body knows how to move toward wholeness. It knows how to move toward healing. If we, as practitioners, get out of the way, the body will show us where to go. Right? Because we're always, the body's trying to find homeostasis, trying to find a way to right itself. And if we just let the body do what it wants to do, then it's going to lead us toward healing. So as a practitioner for Hakomi, what we do is we look at, here's the comet, and I'm just going to get in the tail of the comet because this comet knows where it's going. I don't, but the comet does. And so we're just going to file, just fly in the tail of the comet, okay? The second one is the unity principle. And the unity principle is we basically, we affect each other. We all affect each other. Who I am with you, and who you are with me, we affect each other. How I am with you affects you, and how you are with me affects me. And so I'm not above you or below you, but we're both in this together, and that's an important principle when we get to the therapeutic bubble as we move through this. The mind-body holism, that's shorthand for saying that thoughts affect feelings, and feelings affect thoughts, right? It's an internal process of this thing, this system is always going on, this process is always going on in our nervous system. The principle of mindfulness. Mindfulness is staying present and mindful of both our client and ourselves. How many of you ever had the experience of being in a room where you've had some counter-transference with somebody and you're like, Ugh. you have that experience? <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> I'm not alone in this. So being mindful of that, that can be really diagnostic. When you start paying attention to your own somatic reactions, even though you may not have a thought about it, when you start paying attention to your own somatic awarenesses and somatic reactions, that we can become mindful and go, oh, I'm feeling this thing. I wonder, maybe even through mirror neurons, if they're feeling the same thing through the process of mirror neurons. The principle of nonviolence, which is what um, Ron Kurtz had demonstrated when he put his hand in support of the arching. When we have an agenda in Hakomi, we call that violent. That we don't have an agenda other than to follow where they go. If we think they should be somewhere that they're not, that's an agenda and that we would consider violence. That when we're putting something on them that they're not organically going toward. Okay? Any questions or comments about this? Whew, okay. Oh, darn. Okay. Between an organic propensity in a direction and a cognitive uh, deficit direction. Does that make sense? 
you support them where they're going. So yeah. Whatever where they're going is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. It's a great... Right, right. See, how would I answer that one? Um, you've stumped the star. Uh, no, no. I, no, I think it's a great question. It, it's, it's a really valid question, and I get faced with this every time in my office. It's like, man, that's really messed up, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you're thinking here. I, I would probably tend to take it, whatever this thing is that's messed up thinking, I would probably take it ten in the, into the body and see what the body does with the thinking and then go from there. That would be my natural tendency. Yeah, does that make some sense? Yeah, okay. Any other comments or questions about that? Okay. All right, so um, I understand that you guys like experiential work, so let's try a little bit of that. So we're going to... Um, I'm going to do a little meditation, and I'm going to say a couple of comments or statements to you and just see what you notice and how you react to those statements. So if you wouldn't mind pairing up with somebody near you, just pair up as a couple and sit close to each other. We'll do a little meditation, and then after the meditation, I'll have you uh, talk to each other. All right? So go ahead and pair up with somebody near you. If you don't have a partner, please raise your hand and find another raised hand. Everybody have a partner? All right. So take a moment, just allow yourself to relax. And if it's okay, we're just gonna do another med little meditation. This meditation will be about five minutes or so. So let yourself get comfortable, close your eyes if that feels good to you. Or let your eyes fall to the floor so you're not distracted by the visual field. Take a moment just to feel inside. Let your awareness drop down into your body. Sometimes the roof brain chatter can get most of our attention and we're going to invite you just to drop in and gently and softly make contact with your physical being. And as you settle in, notice the sounds you hear. You might hear the hum of the air conditioner. The sound of my voice as it lands on your ears. Maybe a beep in the hallway. Notice you don't have to effort to hear. Hearing is effortless. It's just the sounds come to you. And let the sounds just land in you wherever they want to. There's nothing you have to do with them. The sounds just come in, fall on your ears, and they impact you in some way. You might hear the buzz of the PA system. Maybe hear your own breath. and letting yourself return to experience. Just coming back to experience. And now let yourself tune into the sensate channel, the channel of sensations. And notice how you notice sensations. You might notice your sits bones on the chair. Feeling your back body against the chair holding you up. Just notice how that feels. As 
see if you can notice where your clothing is making contact with your skin. All the places that maybe the clothing feels too tight or too loose. And for extra credit, you can see where the clothing isn't making contact with your skin. Can you sense how far away it is from you? And you might notice the temperature of the air. Does the air feel warm or cool? Does it feel humid or dry? And see if you can notice if there's any air motion around your face. You might notice some turbulence around your nostrils as you breathe in and out. Exquisite listening to your sensate experience. And let your awareness now drop down into your hands. Do your hands feel the same? Or do they feel different? Is one warmer or cooler than the other? Is there tension or relaxation in your hands? And then bring your awareness to your belly. A lot of people hold tension in their belly. If you were to bring gentle awareness to the belly without trying to change or modify anything, what do you notice without judgment? In, this, in the spacious place of open awareness, what's in your belly? Is it tense? Is it relaxed? Is it open? Is it nervous? Is it anxious? And then bring your attention up into your chest, into your heart area. Notice your experience there. And wiggle your toes and see what that experience is like. Bring your awareness into your toes and just wiggle your toes. Notice what it's like to wiggle your toes. And then come back to just a general awareness, just being aware of everything as it lives in you. Again, this is without efforting. There's no efforting involved here. And in a moment, I'm going to say a short phrase to you. And all you need to do is to watch what happens. Just as pay exquisite attention to what happens when I say this phrase. So allow yourself to be in a place where you can hear this. And there's no right or wrong answer here. You can't do this wrong. This is just about watching what arises. And notice what happens when you hear the words, You've worked hard. You can relax now. You've worked hard. You can relax now. Notice what happens there. Is there a voice that says, that's crazy? Is there a relaxation that happens? Is there a Resistance? Is there a contraction that happens? Is there something that says, my gosh, I wish that was true? And notice the time it takes for this 
awareness to arise in you? Is it really quick or does it kind of come up slowly over time? Okay, and let's call this one neutral. We're going to come back and try this one more time with a different phrase. So let yourself kind of reset, reboot, come back to neutral, whatever that is for you. <coughs> and in a place of awareness and open receptivity, notice what happens when you hear the words, all of you is welcome here. All of you is welcome here. And notice what arises in the silence. Notice if there's a contraction or expansion. And when you feel complete with that, take a breath and open your eyes. And you'll have five minutes to share with each other what that exercise was like, what you notice arising. I'll call out a halfway time at two and a half minutes, so each get two and a half minutes. I'll call out a halfway time, so you, if you're going one and one, you'll know when to switch. Please begin sharing now. Okay, so I'd like to um, hear from the, the audience here. What did you experience there? What was, what did you notice? What came obvious to you? Was there anything that was new or what happened for you during that, that exercise? Uh, can we get a mic runner, please? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Hi there. Hi. I noticed that Shifting into my senses of hearing, hearing became very acute. Mm -hmm. Like I was very aware of the sounds in the space. And then when we shifted into the physical sensations, I didn't want to move away from the hearing. Uh -huh. nice. My intention, my presence wanted to stay with the hearing. Uh -huh. And it took me a little while to integrate the physical sensations into that. I love that you said that because part of this work is about integration of, of the different senses. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. So, yeah, once the hearing was on, it, it couldn't be turned off. I uh. was <laughs> everything. But when you... Um, Can you speak up a little bit? I'm yes. I'm when you said you. that yeah. you've worked hard... It's like I felt it throughout my body, mm. physically, and an area where I usually feel a lot of tension and stress, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I began to notice the tension and stress uh, in that part of my body. Wow, yeah. And your next directive of all of you is welcome here, my thought was, well, that's very sweet. <laughs> I haven't heard that but one I before. But I didn't it, believe it. You didn't believe it, right? <laughs> not, not because you No, no, I get it. Not because That's you right. were not being authentic, mm -hmm. but that, no, all of me doesn't belong here. Uh -huh. It's not possible. Uh, yeah. Something inside you went, uh, no, I, no, this isn't true for me in, in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for your uh, transparency there. Yeah. Um, the thing that struck me most through the process was in the beginning what I was noticing was how uncomfortable my body was mm -hmm. and um, and that felt so real to me and noticing like oh yeah I tend to have this ache in my back or my hips kind of bothering me today and, and it just feels like this kind of that's just the way my body is mm -hmm. um, and then as we went through the process and I'm getting my energy grounded and breathing and just noticing how much more comfort came to my body and it wasn't as mm. real as it felt in the beginning oh wow that's awesome how did you can I ask how you noticed that comfort come in how did it how did it show up for you have a sense of that um, well uh, there started to be this integration between like I noticed myself slouching and feeling like oh it's such an effort to like sit up straight yeah. and then you said you know 
um, that you've you've worked hard, you can relax now. And it and there was this connection. I was like, uh -huh. oh, there's this part of me that's worked so hard. Uh -huh. And when I acknowledge that, then I can sit up straighter. Um, you know, so just getting my energy grounded and acknowledging those parts that were expressing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> well, I just noticed the, um, when you made that first directive, um, my hands went, I, I, they were there, but I couldn't feel them. Mm. Or they, it was like wow. they weren't there. They were just huh. like weightless. And then when you said the second one, then my legs did that too. Wow, isn't so, that cool? Yeah, it was I don't great. know what it means. It was, but it's it was really very cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like my whole body to just feel there. Thank you. Uh huh. Great. In Hakomi, we would actually work with that. It's it's just like wow. This is I don't know what this means, but if we stay with that process of when my hands disappear, my feet disappear, or something else disappears, or I'm feeling a contraction, that's our access point. That's our entry point for deeper work, right? So it's like I don't know what it means, and probably the person who you probably don't know what it means either is my guess. It felt good, right. And so we can use that. So for you, it felt good. We can use that as a resource, right? So for those of you who know somatic experiencing, this is what we would call resourcing. Yeah, uh, back here. A couple of us noticed that uh, when you uh, yeah. said, you know, for the extra credit, that it was uh, very, uh, um, very nice to have that l element of humor in a guided uh -huh. visualization <laughs> of meditation that usually is not there. So it's like a very inv sort of a playful invitation. Oh, this is serious yeah. stuff we're doing here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm going to be kind of the fly in the ointment. Great, we love flies. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do this kind of thing very easily or okay. very well. So my reactions tend to be um, way slowed down. But I, I did have um, a sense of re more relaxation when with your first directive. Mm -hmm. And with the second directive, it took me a while to figure out what you were saying. It, it mm -hmm. just did not compute at first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when I realized, oh, that's what you mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was it. It kind of felt flat for you? Then? Yeah, it yeah, did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Great, great noticing. Thank you for bringing that in. <laughs> One more? Okay. Hi, I think uh, with both of them, the um, relaxation exercises or the noticing of what's going on was very helpful. And with the second one about all of you is welcome here. <clears throat> I just, uh, I think I've been waiting for that for a long time. Oh, wow. And it just really came wow. in. Yeah. And uh, I, I could just, I don't know. I, I felt very whole and very um, present. Yeah. Yeah. As you speak, I notice your hand is doing this motion here. Yes. Yeah. So if we were to work with that, we would like, let's pay attention to what your hand is doing. Mm. Yeah. Something just, I'm some mm -hmm. letting this in or something's happening here that my hand is actually letting me receive this message. Mm -hmm. It was whatever. like, yeah, it was like coming home. It's like coming home. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's how we would work some, with something like that. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, so as you're maybe getting a bit of a sense that um, Hakomi isn't just psychotherapy, I tend to more contextualize it as nervous system therapy. That it's just not about what we think. And with the principles I showed earlier, it's about what we think and what we feel, and what we feel affects how we think. So it's about integrating the thought we have, like, oh no, that can't be true, he's just saying that, or something in me feels welcomed here, or something in me allows me to relax. We can go with whatever the body response is. It's not intended to go any place specific. It's intended to evoke something in your body that, that we can use to get a deeper sense of what's happening. Right? Is that making some sense? All right. So we're trying to integrate the nervous system and um, the deeper brain structures, which brings me to the next one.